All right, we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions that have different denominators today. As a prerequisite or something you need to know before, you need to know how to find common denominators between fractions and how to reduce fractions to being in lowest terms. And you'll see that as we go, but I'm going to assume that you've watched the videos on both of these things or read a lesson or you know how to do those so that we can move forward. All right. The steps for adding or subtracting fractions are these. First, you convert the fractions to having a common denominator. Then you add or subtract the numerators. Simplify, and you're done. So here's an example of us adding fractions. What we're going to do is find the least common multiple. And to do that, we're going to list the multiples. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And the multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, 20, but we don't have to go any farther. We found our least common multiple is equal to 10. Our finding our least common multiple is the first step in getting common denominators. So now I'm going to convert the fraction of 2 fifths to having a common denominator of 10. I know that 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom times 2. And that gives me my fraction of 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. It's just written with a denominator of 10. I'll write the fraction of 1 half. To convert that, I'm going to multiply it times 5, both the top and bottom, which gives me a fraction of 5 over 10. Again, converting these two fractions so that they have a common denominator of 10 is definitely a prerequisite skill for adding and subtracting fractions. So let's go ahead and rewrite this question now that we have that information. We know what this question is asking is 4 tenths plus 5 tenths. All right. 2 over 5 is the same as 4 over 10. We've shown that. And 1 over 2 is the same as 5 over 10. So now we just need to add those two. 4 over 10 plus 5 over 10. We add the numerators. The denominator remains the same. And that's our final answer. And 9 over 10 is in lowest terms already, so we don't have to simplify. All right, let's add another set of, of uh, fractions here. We'll start out by, again, listing the multiples of 7, 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 54, or 56, and then 63. Now I'm going to list the factors of 9, 9, 18, 27, 36, oh, 45, 54, 63. And you notice I stopped at 63. That's because I know 7 times 9 is 63. The largest possible least common denominator is what you get when you multiply the two common denom the two denominators together. In this case, that is the least common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to multiply 4 over 7. I'll have to multiply that times 9 on both the top and bottom. 4 times 9 is 36. 7 times 9 is our 63. And then I'll do the same for 1 over 9. I'll multiply the top times 7 and the bottom times 7 to give me 7 over 63. Now that I have my two fractions, 36 over 63 plus 7 over 63, I can add those together and get 43 over 63, which, lucky for us, is our fraction in lowest terms. 43 over 63 will be the final answer for this one. Again, a little bit more challenging finding our least common denominator. 7 and 9 don't have anything in common, really. So they, with those ones, we had to list a whole lot of multiples to get to our common multiple. All right, let's add these ones together. I think we'll find something different. It's a little bit easier here because we know 3 times 2 is 6. So that means we don't have to list a whole lot of multiples before we're given our least common multiple of 6. Or in other words, that was going to become our least common denominator. 1 third 
we multiply the top times 2 and the bottom times 2, that gives us 2 sixths. And 1 sixth remains the same. 1 sixth is 1 sixth. So we're going to rewrite those fractions as 2 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which gives us 3 over 6. Now, when you're looking at this fraction of 3 over 6, they share in common that they both can be divided evenly by 3. So we divide both of them by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And that reduces our fraction to lowest terms of 1 half. So 1 third plus 1 sixth is equal to 1 half. All right? That's what we find out by adding those together. And again, we found the least common denominator, converted our fractions to having a common denominator, then we redu added the numerators and reduced it down to lowest terms. All right, let's do some subtraction questions. Same basic thing that we're going to do here. We're going to start by listing 6, 12, 18. And again, I recognize that I just was thinking 9 times 2 is 18. But I recognize that um, 9 has a factor or the multiples of 9 and 18. So I'm going to stop when I get to 18, and that's going to be my least common denominator. Write out my fractions. 5 over 9, I know that I have to multiply 9 times 2 to get 18. So I'll multiply the top times 2 as well. 5 times 2 is 10, 9 times 2 is 18. So my new fraction, 5 over 9, is equal to 10 over 18. I'm going to take 2 over 6. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. So now I have my new fractions. And I'm going to rewrite them as a subtraction question. 10 over 18 minus 6 over 18. I subtract the numerators. 10 minus 6 is 4. And then I reduce down by dividing by my common factor of 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So the final answer then is 2 over 9. So 5 over 9 minus 2 over 6 leaves me with 2 over 9. All right? And there we have it. That would be the final answer reduced to lowest terms. All right, let's subtract a new one. This one here, we actually have a nice common factor of 12 already. 7 over 12 minus 2 over 12. So this one here, we don't need to find a common factor. We don't have to find common multiples, common denominators, any of that. We just subtract. Whew. Nice. That one's a good break for us in here. <laughs> OK. There we go. We just subtract. And, and in this case, we have our final answer, because that 5 over 12 is already in lowest terms. All right, let's go ahead and look at this one. Um, again, I'm going to have a pretty short list here. 7 times 1 is 7, and 7 times 2 is 14. So I know that my common denominator is 14. So 2 over 14 is equal to 2 over 14. That one's done. 5 over 7, I need to multiply both the top and bottom times 2, which gives me 10 over 14. So my question then is asking 2 over 14 minus 10 over 14. And I'm going to end up with a negative answer, because 2 minus 10 gives me negative 8. But my denominator of 14 remains the same. I'm going to reduce this to lowest terms by dividing both the top and bottom by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. And that will be my final answer, is negative 4 over 7. So that is how we would solve that type of question. Again, a quick recap. Um, the steps for adding or subtracting fractions is first you convert them to having the common denominator, add or subtract the numerators, simplify, and you're done.